Good Monday morning, everyone. I'm David Molnar here, your photography mentor, and the one, the only, the fantastic, the the uh, the, the kind of uh, you know reddish hair, yeah, semi bearded, Rich Coleman over here. Rich, how you doing today? I'm good, and I am David's favorite ginger shot. I mean, if we're talking about ginger shots, that's me. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's fantastic. Hey, I have a question for you. Uh, would you like to join my hide and seek team? I really need more people because good players are hard to find. Hey, oh. see, I'm just answered like a jerk. Like, no. Like, if, if I would have said no, like, I walk Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in today, folks. You guys are um, you guys are amazing. We've got uh, Alana from Michigan, Karen from Montana, Bobby Parker Laco from uh, I don't know, but she says, but he or she says good morning. Carol Fulton, Marissa, what's that? Carol. 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 Yep. Um, fantastic. How do I sound when I get really close to the microphone like this? Does it sound good? Does it sound Sound creepy? Like a like like a radio DJ voice. Like a radio DJ. Give me your sexiest. Give me your sexiest DJ voice. This is five zero three seven. The the river. We're here with a steamy, hot, soothing jazz set today. Uh, oh, man, I gotta, hey, I gotta get my sound effects out. I, I I keep forgetting. Okay. Hey, what are we gonna give away today? What what kind of effect is this is this you know gonna have on everyone today? We haven't talked about it at all, to be clear to anybody listening and think uh, thinking that this isn't real. But we plan everything out for these podcasts. Everything <laughs> we have a script, you know, like verbatim, like nothing is off the cuff. Promise. All right, true story. Like before we went online, before we went on live, David, like we're like making sure all the audio is syncing and recording correctly, and and it was literally a conversation like, uh, what are we doing? What are we doing again today? So just to know, people, this is real life. This is uncensored Dave and super uncensored Rich. So whatever comes at you today, we love you. Um, and I think for well, a giveaway, I, we do have an idea. We do have an idea of what we're talking about today. It was just I was wondering what specific because there's like ten different ways we could take it. So for me, the question was, is it going to be this direction or this direction or this direction? And I really want to cover them all. So we'll just kind of pick one and start today because we're going to continue to talk I, about I'll how you can build your business. Today. Yeah, no, all good. What are we going to give away? What did you, you say? I don't even know. I'm trying to think of something that relates to it. Like what relates to that that we could give Ooh. away? Like I was like trying to figure out. Maybe you've got some buddies in the in – the... uh, Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let, let, let's give away a lens today. Let's give away our favorite portrait lens. What do you think? That sounds let's great. Be, let's, give away, let's give away a – 50. Let's give away a 50. Um, let me let me turn my. Uh, that was, that was your wife we'll calling right now. Yeah, Don't give away I, more stuff. No, it was, it was a um, spam caller calling from California. Um, probably to check and make sure I'm not violating any, you know, leaving my house or breathing outside. Goodness gracious! We're gonna give away one of you guys to one of you guys a um, a lens, a 50 millimeter lens today. So all you have to do, if you're interested in that, we're gonna be talking about business today, um, how to grow your business, how to how to how to be um, you know, starting, continuing to grow a part-time photography gig, side hustle, or even full-time. You know, so we're going to be talking about some of, the, some of the next steps for that. All you have to do to register, register to win this lens is just share this Facebook Live podcast recording um, on your Facebook page. Click that share button, share it, say we're talking about photography, growing your photography business, and uh, we'll, pick, we'll randomly draw one of you guys at the end. To win a lens. So we'll we'll you, give you something to help you grow your photography business. Because mm. if you don't have a 50, I will say you have to have a 50 millimeter lens. Like that mm. might sound mean, but y- y- come on. Like you need it. Um, like somebody within the photo mentorship, where, well, like I always ask when they ask me questions, I'm like, well, I need more info. So give me all of your gear. Right. And right. she was telling me all the lenses she had. And it was like, I have a, a 70 to 400. You know, aperture uh, 3.5 to 12. You know what I mean? Like all these. And then she said 51.2 or 4. And I was like, okay, like not to be mean, but that 51.4 lens that you paid the least amount of money for is your best lens, um, especially for taking pictures of people. Um, and a lot of photographers love the effect of the background being in blurry and the person being in focus. Um, and a 50 millimeter lens, like we're going to give away today, is the perfect way to achieve that because on a crop sensor camera, it's actually closer to 77. 
and it's it, it shoots at a, a low enough aperture, meaning enough light is coming through the lens that the background is super, super creamy, and the, the person you're trying to take a picture of is super in focus. So it's a really fun lens to give away. It's a super fun lens and flattering lens to take pictures of people with. And today we're going to teach you how to make a little cash. That's right. A lot of cash. How to cash and ching. And we're going to give you a lens to make some cash with. I want to I want to add um, something that, that's great. I like how you mentioned that that lens was you know closer to a 77. I forget if the conversion is 1.6. I'm actually going to do the math really quick. 50 times 1.6 uh, is equal to 80. 80. So it's 80. Yeah. Yeah. No. Anyways. Um, okay. So a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera like my 5D Mark IV or like your Canon R. I don't know if that's right in front of you. Um, so if I take that 50 millimeter lens, excuse me. And if I put that 50 millimeter lens on my camera, then this lens, which is an amazing lens, is basically, it's not zoomed in or it's not zoomed out. It's what you and I see with our eyes, okay? It's, it's not like closer to the subject and it's not further from the subject, wide or getting stressed out or stretched out or distorted. So a 50 millimeter lens is what you and I see with our eyes. Um, unless you have glasses that are like, you know, zoomed in or something for reading. Um, so that's really cool because it gives kind of a natural perspective. When you take that same lens, like this 50 millimeter lens, and you put it on a like a Canon Rebel, like this. Okay, I know some of you guys are just listening to this podcast and not watching it, so you won't be able to see it, but this is a Canon Rebel T6. When you put that 50 millimeter lens on this Rebel T6, what it does is because this sensor inside this camera is actually a smaller sensor or a crop sensor, just like Rich is showing you. Um, Here's what it does. We'll show you that in just a second, Rich. Uh, or we'll show them that in a second. It actually converts this lens and zooms it in closer when you put it on a crop sensor camera like this. Okay? And what that means is that that 50 millimeter lens, which, you know, on a full frame camera is what you and I see with our eyes. When you put it on this, the moment you go to 51 millimeters, by the way, um, like if you have a lens like there's 24 to 70 right here. So on that lens, if I'm at 50, which is right there, it says 50. And if I start zooming in right here to 51, okay, that's starting to get me a little teeny bit closer to my subjects, getting a little bit more compression, compression, getting a little bit of that telephoto uh, zoomed in effect. Um, then you're getting closer to your subject. So anyways, here's the deal. When you put a 50 millimeter lens, any lens actually, on a crop sensor camera, it converts it at times 1.6 is typically the ratio, if I, last time I checked anyway. And so what that means is that this lens on this camera is actually more of like an 80 millimeter lens, which means instead of it being back here, normal eye perspective, it's actually getting you a little bit zoomed in a little bit closer. Okay, that's actually what it does there. And Rich, if for those of you guys who are watching live, Rich, you wanna show that thing again? So the green, the green um, stick it note is, uh, is like the full frame camera, okay? It's the full frame camera like the 5D Mark IV or the, you know, the EOS R or the, the Nikon, I believe, D850, stuff like that. Um, and then the crop sensor is this other camera, okay? So what it means is it's a little bit cheaper for the manufacturers to make a smaller camera sensor. And what it does is it crops in on your, uh, on your composition. So if you think about what is a crop, like if you're looking at an image and you crop in, it looks like you're closer. So that's kind of what's happening there. Is that a fair assessment for you, Rich? Yeah, the, the bigger sensor is more information, more colors, more lights, more darks, more everything. Uh, I mean, honestly, no BS, it's better. You know, the goal is to go full frame eventually, if you can. Um, now, crop sensor cameras are great. They can even be faster. Like uh, a 7D Mark II, David, is faster than your 5D Mark IV. Um, because the mirror is smaller. Heresy. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it depends. Um, you know, I mean, you hear a lot of like these big wigs shooting medium format. And medium format, the sensor is even larger. So, you just want as much information on your sensor as possible. And back in the day, uh, a, a very young David Monar told a very young Richard Coleman, um, he, I think you said megapixel, schmegapixel. I think those are the words that came out of your mouth. Because you were like, it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, back then it was like probably 12 megapixel to 15. Like that was like the big argument, the big debate. And you're like, just go full frame. It doesn't matter because your sensor is getting more information. David mm. loves, loves, loves the iPhone. What's the big burning issue with the iPhone, David? What does it have very small? It has a very small sensor. Like it has a 12 megapixel, 12 megapixel sensor, which is the same it's had for like the last 
since like iPhone five or six yeah. or something. I forget which one. What is this? Eleven now. Um, I just got this recently. It's really awesome. I took an underwater an underwater video. It was mind blowing. I thought it was incredible. Um, anyways, um, but uh, the the problem with iPhones, okay, they look the pictures look great on your screen, okay. I'm like, don't read my text messages. Um, uh, but anyways, the pictures look great on. Yeah, it says software update. Uh, the pictures look great. It's the government trying to track me. Um, the pictures hardware look, update. Yeah, hardware update. Um, the uh, sorry, I got totally totally sidetracked there. The problem <laughs> it's small. With, we're talking about pro- we're talking about it being too small. Yeah, the problem with iPhone photos is this: even though they're going to look amazing on your screen, when you blow them up, you're going to see lots of degradation just in general. Um, not that you can't. We have an article that's one of our more popular articles on how large you can blow up iPhone photos, um, and so you can. But here's the issue: when you zoom in um, on a picture that's taken with a really small sensor, which is like an iPhone. Okay, then the quality is not going to be really that great. Okay, and so you think about this one. I actually don't know how big the sensor is. I have I don't have that data in front of me. The sensor is really small on this. Okay, and on this one it's medium size, and on this camera, uh, the five. So this one was the Rebel T6, a medium size one, and the 5D Mark IV, which is a full frame. The sensor is a lot bigger. So it's essentially the quality that's being recorded in your images just gets incrementally better. Okay. Um, can the iPhones take amazing photos? Yes, but they look the best on a small compressed screen like this. When you're going to blow images up, this is going to be better than that, and then this is going to be even better than, than that as well. And so the megapixels are really just how many pixels are in those, um, in those image sensors. So you can raise the megapixels up, but if it's still in a really small sensor, then it's not really doing a whole lot for you. Is that a fair assessment to you? Which is a, yeah, it's a one, it's a half. It's a one over 2.55 inch sensor. I don't even know what that means. It's teeny. It's teeny. It's teeny. Love it. Okay, cool. Well, we're, we're going to give away. That's, that's the nerdy guy in me coming out. Hey, no, I love it. So, so the whole point is that we're going to be giving away one of these lenses in a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's a good little discussion. You know, it's, a, it's kind of a hot topic, you know, like full frame versus, you know. And so what we're not saying is that, you know, the uh, crop sensor cameras like the Rebels or the, you know, the Nikon D3500, which is the current model of that. We're not saying they're not awesome. They're amazing. But they're a four or $500 camera. Okay. Yes. A $4,000. They were awful 10 years ago. They're they great were. now. They were awful 10 years ago and now they're great. That's the very fair assessment. Is a $4,000 camera better? Yes, it's better. Can you take amazing photos on this? Yes, I guarantee you, no offense to anyone in our comments, Rich Coleman could take a better photo than you probably because he's amazing on a $400 camera. Um, Then if one of you guys that don't really know photography yet, not saying y'all don't, I know lots of you guys do, but one of you guys who don't know photography that well yet, and you get a four or five thousand, six thousand dollar camera, Rich Coleman is gonna be able to take a better photo on a you know a four hundred dollar camera package than a six thousand dollar camera package for someone who doesn't know. So um yeah, they're good. But the full frame is better. Because I know how to see, shoot, and edit like a photographer, David. That's right. Do you know how to specialize and then build? I do. Well, I like to specialize. I mean, I, I specialize. I love building. You know, I feel like we could elaborate more on that if there's only more time to talk about building. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If there only there was more. Oh, wait, there is. That's what we're going to be talking about today. You know. Hey. So, you know, to be to to be a uh, a great photographer, you need to learn how to see, shoot, and edit like a pro. Okay, meaning you need to get those foundational things of learning how to see the future and envision the images that you want. And then you learn how to take manual control of your images and control uh, what the exposure, the depth of field, the composition, and um, the, you know, the, the motion, whether the motion is frozen in your subject or, um, or in, your, in your picture, um, or being allowed, like a waterfall, for instance. That's you know, taking manual control of your camera. Then the next step is to uh, edit your edit to recreate the emotion that you felt when you're viewing the scene with your own eyes to help your viewers feel the same emotion that you felt. Okay, so those are the three photography superpowers, the kind of the the foundational things: see, shoot, and edit like a pro. Okay, that's important. The next step is once you've got those foundational things down, is to specialize. And when I say specialize, it's like, okay, now that I've learned the foundations of how my camera works, how to see, shoot, and edit, now I want to specialize in astrophotography, 
you know, like in photographing the Milky Way. So you go deeper and you start learning specifically how to, you know, take amazing images, right? Um, with astrophotography, maybe for you, it's I want to shoot, um, you know, kids or newborn portraits. Okay, so you're going to specialize in shooting natural light portraits um, near the window for newborns. Okay, because you know how to envision what it should look like because you've learned to see. You've learned to shoot your camera in manual mode and capture what you intend with the correct, um, you know, exposure and blurredness in the background, how deep or how shallow the depth of field is. Okay, and then you learn to edit and use presets or to recreate the emotion that you wanted your viewers to feel. Okay, and then you specialize um, by going deeper in learning the craft and the expertise of photographing newborns. That's an example of specialization. Then, after you've done those things, then you move on to building your business or your side hustle. Right? Okay. Make some so, money. Yeah, to make some money. You know, so you can make some money on the weekends. You could go full time potentially. You could quit the that day job that you hate. Or uh, unfortunately, that maybe you lost recently because of the whole COVID 19 shutdown. Um, you know, so it's a good time to be talking about this because I think all of us could probably use a little extra money, you know, going into the next few months or the next years. Right? Um, and Amen. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> jerk face. Rich is like, give me a raise on the air. He's always trying to pester me. Uh, yeah. Um, so anyways, learning to build. So what we want to do is, one of the things we talked, did we talk about this a little bit last week? Only show what you want to sell. Mm -hmm. I believe we talked about that a little teeny bit. So I think what we should do is we should talk about kind of some of the, we should talk about websites today because I think that's one of the most crucial things. Once you've learned to take, you know, see, shoot and edit, um, like a pro, and then you started specializing and learning your craft, and you're building a portfolio of things that you want to specialize in. So for that example of photographing newborns, don't um, you know put a bunch of pictures of you know rock concerts on your website if you're trying to specialize in being a, a, a newborn portrait photographer. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't help you uh, get credibility or get um, you know, or basically build your portfolio or book any gigs for photographing newborns if you're saying, hey, listen, um, I photograph, you know, hard rock bands or I photograph horses jumping on the weekend. Neither of those things help your case to being hired as a professional portrait photographer to photograph a mother's newborn. Mm. Fair assessment, Rich? Fair assessment. And David, can I be uh, can I be mean, Rich, for a second? I'm gonna let yeah. you go, but I've this this eeks, irks me to the core. And to take it, photography out of it, so we don't make anybody cry today. Man, oh man, do I hate dumb names. Like, I have five DJ buddies who professionally DJ weddings, and their mm -hmm. businesses are like I dance party DJ, Outer Banks wedding DJ services. And every time I refer them, I say, call Bruce Jones, call Matt Cooper, call John Harper. Okay, now this is a complete side tangent, but I love you. Here's the thing. It is way easier to brand yourself. So we can talk about that as a, as a topic for what you're about to talk about, David. And number two, I want people, when they think of you, um, like Susan, Susan's listening, whoever's listening, I want when people think of you to think of, you know, that moment that David had back on episode two where he said, I'm David Molnar, the freaking photographer. Like people need to associate you as a photographer, not like this hodgepodge of creativity. They need to be like, oh, that's Rich Coleman. He takes wedding photos. Every time they think of me, they think of Rich Coleman, the fun wedding photographer. And when you specialize down and start building, you need to figure out the foundation on which you want to build and that might be hard as sunflower, daisies, sunshine, pictures. Like what the H is that, David? That is so good, Rich. What you just said, guys, I, like listen to this. I'm man. sorry. He, Woo. No, 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 no. That That is so good there. Um, so there's a couple takeaways from that. And I want to I want to like pause here Dying. and probably have Rich like repeat him, repeat himself a, a few times there. Um, here's the thing. Can you... Can you succeed 
as Daisy Daisies in Bloom photography. Yes, you can succeed as that. Is it harder to succeed? Probably um, as Daisies in Bloom photography. Um, no offense to Daisies in Bloom photography if that's a real company. Okay, guarantee it is. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> um, like, and I know some people don't want to use their name. They're like, "Hey, I'm going to get married, or should I use my maiden name?" Like, I get it. There's all those things to consider. Totally get that. Um, however, when you were talking about your your um, your DJ buddies who are it's like OBX DJs and all those things, I mean that's a great name. Like OBX DJs is a cool thing because it actually conveys clearly like what what your company does. But the the reality is that when you're talking about something that's a specialized service like photography or DJing, you don't want to call a random company and have a random DJ sent out. You don't want to call a David Molnar Photography and have some random intern go out and photograph your album cover. You know? That's not what that's not what Sony would call me for. That's not what Pepsi would call me for. Okay? That's not what a bride would call me for when they were, um, you know, when, when my wife and I were shooting weddings for ten to fifteen thousand uh, dollar wedding packages, um, that's kind of where we ended up uh, shooting ten to fifteen thousand dollar wedding packages, and then we'd sell prints and, and canvases and albums and stuff on top of that. But when we were doing that, it wasn't they wanted us specifically. They wanted David and Tammy Molnar. They didn't want some associates. I actually at one point started an associate photography company and um, I, there's people that do it well I just am not smart enough to figure it out okay but for me um, and if you're listening you can tell me how to do it if you if you guys have done it right Sandra uh, Likens Pitt said heck no I want David or Rich coming out exactly when we started a um, an associate photography business for shooting weddings my wife and I were booking so many weddings and we could only take so many. And we're like, we should take those extra referrals and hand them to these amazing photographers um, uh, that were working underneath of us. You know, there's a photographer named Daniel Meggs, who's amazing, amazing photographer who was working underneath of us. And a good buddy of mine in Nashville. Look him up, Daniel Meggs. Anyways, was he on the Mercy Me shoot with you? Daniel Meggs, maybe? Um, or no, it was Will I Knowles, can't. I think. Will Knowles it was is amazing, Will too. Knowles. But I met yeah. Daniel somewhere. We're Facebook friends somehow. Okay, he's a good guy. Great Love photographer. That. Like, yeah. no no BS to that. That's not a yeah. plug. That's oh, a real great guy. photographer yeah. and great dad, too, and good friend. Um, you're welcome, Daniel. Anyways, um, Daniel and I met on a Jeremy Cowart shoot, like, 15 years ago as assistants. So, anyways, um, Daniel was, was – we were trying to refer extra gigs to Daniel – under our associate photography company. And let me tell you, the like Daniel's an amazing photographer and he would take amazing care of any brides that I think was shooting under that. I, I think Daniel was, I actually forget because it was so long ago. But anyways, so Daniel, if you never were, I'm sorry, but I think you were. Anyways, um, I, I know we had several photographers. Don't worry, I was I was never in this, so I mean, I, I, I haven't yeah, arrived yeah, yeah. yet. But if he's like, no, I never did that. I'm like, I thought you did, but maybe, I, whatever. We had four or five photographers shooting underneath of us, okay? The brides would be so much more high maintenance because they didn't know who Daniel was yet. They didn't have the respect for Daniel yet. Okay, now I'm sure he has that respect with people that find his website. But they knew David and Tammy Molnar and they wanted to book David and Tammy Molnar. And we'd say, hey, we could book this other photographer for two grand. You know, we're 10 grand and they're two grand or whatever it was. Um, the, the, the wedding photographers were like, Sorry, not the wedding photographers. The 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 brides were kind of like, what is it about these people? Why are they so cheap compared to you guys? I will now micromanage you guys and make sure I get what I'm supposed to get. And I'm not going to trust them implicitly and fully. So here's the point. Um, like Rich was so brilliantly saying, if you make it about a business name and you have multiple photographers under you, you can do that successfully. I don't know how to personally make that a success. Okay. Um, but it's easier to build trust with when it's a service-based business like this, okay? When it's your name, when it's Coleman Shots or David Molnar or David and Tammy Molnar, because uh, we were, you know, husband and wife photography team, davidandtammy.com, which I don't even know if it was really a website. Him, him, him and Tammy, not me and David. Yeah, David and Tammy. Um, I'm not. You're not Tammy. Point is, is that they wanted us specifically, their trust was with us, 
when people would say like, oh, which wedding photographer should I book? They're like, you have to book David Molnar or David and Tammy Molnar. They didn't want our associates that were one-tenth of the price or one-half of the price, whatever it was, okay? They didn't trust them. And when we did book brides for our associate photographers, let me tell you, they were just so much more high maintenance. And there was so much lack of trust there because and they the were paying name, the, what's that? They paid, and they were paying they, you less. They paid us way less and it was way more work. And we were like, oh my gosh, I'd rather just shoot one Amen. wedding than like schedule five to 10 weddings with associates and make less money because it, anyways. So the point is, Rich, if, if you haven't done it yet, if you haven't built a website or if you haven't built a domain or if you haven't started your business yet, um, what do you recommend if you have not started your business yet? Buy your name as a dot com. I cannot do this. Now, to show you, like to speak on the adverse side of this, like when I decided, I went and shot a concert. Um, it might have been John Mayer. I can't remember. And I didn't have a dot com. So I was like, these pictures will be up Monday. It was like Saturday. So I went home and edited the pictures, built a website. And I, Rich Coleman is the prime minister in Canada or something. So Rich Coleman, everything is taken. Not anymore. Literally. If you ever buy it, please buy it for me. Last time I checked, it was nine grand. Um, I would love to be richcoleman.com because then when David fires me, I can go back to my roots as a plumber. And Rich Coleman, it could be anything. When you, when you own your name, it's not – it's so specific to me, which we talked about getting specific, that it can follow me no matter what I do. Not that I want you to be a photographer today and an electrician tomorrow, but when you own your name, that's you. When I book you know, anything, when the owner of the business shows up, I'm stoked. When Voyevich Electric shows up in a van and it's Brad Voyevich, I'm like, oh, wow, this is the owner fixing yeah. my socket. You know, I mean, it's, it's a cool feeling. Yeah. You know, we talked last week about look like a million dollars, charge a million dollars. But when that, when your name is on something, hmm. you like own it more. When your name is on it, like it's easy to be Daisy Bloom today and then you get a bunch of bad, better business reviews and change it tomorrow. But when it's Rich Coleman or David Monar, number one, you can do whatever you want with it. You care more because that's you. And I say that when I meet with a bride and they're like, who's the DJ? I say this word for word. I said, He's got some crappy name, but you need to brook Bruce Jones. Like I say that <laughs> because I don't even know what half of their names are because like everything where I live is like sand seashell, sand milepost. It's all like stupid, horrible names that are great, <laughs> but they also limit you to where you're at. Like yeah. you want to be able to grow and your name can grow. That's true. It can grow. It builds trust and respect a lot easier. And when it's David Molnar Photography and David Molnar shows up, they're like, Boom. There, there's, there's trust already implicitly there, okay? Because you can't hide behind a name. And so what it does is it'll, yeah, Cynthia said integrity, yeah. Um, and Lori's asking the question, what if your name is taken as a dot .com? That yep. was me. Coleman Shots is a four day GoDaddy search where it was like richcoleman.com is taken, Rich Coleman Photography was taken, Rich Coleman Photo was taken. And I was like, Coleman Photography. I went through like 20 different lists I was at my friend Nathan Lawrence's house and we were trying to figure this out together and I finally landed on Coleman Shots and I hated it. I hated that as a business name, but it had my name in it and that was good enough. Yeah. And now it's tattooed on my dad's arm forever. I mean, it's hilarious. Like this business name <laughs> that I hated is now a part of my forever being. So I love it, man. I got, um, I got a unicorn and, and jumping over a David Monar logo on my back. as like a tramp stamp. I'll show that later. Oh, I don't have any, I don't have any tattoos yet. I think I need to like get my kids tattooed on me or something. Um, buying a domain can be tricky. Researching a domain can be tricky and all those different things. Um, and there's tons of different websites and stuff. I do, I don't want to let any cats out of the bag, but we have some stuff in the works to help photographers with websites coming up potentially soon. Um, um. yeah, so we'll see. Um, so keep that in your back pocket that we'll probably have the best, most simple, most amazing solution for you in photography websites in the future. If you can't find your name.com, then you can try to find your name.photo.com. Uh, it's not, not, not dot photo. Actually, you can get domains that are like, I think dot photo now or dot photography and dot stuff like that. So, so you could probably get like, you know, Cynthia Jones dot photo. 
potentially as an option. Dot com is always the best, but you know we're we're running out of real estate. It's just like land. You know, you're running it out and it keeps on getting expensive. I was blessed to be able to buy DavidMoore.com when I was 18 years old, so like two or three years ago. Um, well, I own both my kids' names already. I don't, if you haven't done that, I yeah. bought my kids' names. Yep. Yep. Um, I write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna buy your kids right now. Uh, you're gonna buy my kids? They're not for sale, man. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I actually did buy that. Um, I did buy, um, one for my kids, for one of my kids, I think a long time ago. Um, but anyways, um, you know, other people have done this. They've used their name, like their first name and their middle name potentially, or, or like, a you know, um, a, a, a shorter version of their last name if they have a really long last name that's hard to pronounce. There's all sorts of ways to get around it. The point is you want it to be memorable and easy for people. And it doesn't necessarily, your domain doesn't necessarily have to be the exact as your business. Like, um, you know, like uh, I have some friends recently that I'm not gonna throw anyone under the bus, but they, they had, um, they had, let's say their name was John Jones. Okay. Um, they had bought like John Jones photography, LLC.com. And I was like, like, I mean, I guess, but like, you know, that's like AA, like AA photography. That's like, it reminds me of like yellow pages. I, I just like, I, I don't know. Like I, I guess you can have LLC.com, but it just, you know, it's, I don't know, whatever. Um, okay. There's also two other ways and other creative solutions that you can come up with your domain name. Okay. Invest in a logo. I think that's really important that your brand looks, you know, spend 50 bucks on, a, you know, a logo creating software or something like that. Photo logo is a really good one. I think we might even have a link for that. Um, and then and the next thing is get a website, you know, and the website thing, it, we, like I said, we're going to have some really good solutions for you guys in the near future. So we'll have some stuff that we can recommend for y'all. But here's the thing on your website. Um, you really want to you really want to show what you want to sell. So kind of going back to that conversation about sorry, did you want to say something, Rich? Or no, you, no, I was, just, I was saying, right, amen right, right. saying amen without saying amen. It's like, yeah. Killing it. Um, you really want to show what you want to sell, okay? If you want to sell, um, this is an example of polar opposites. If you want to show portraits of newborn babies and you want to photograph them for a living and you know make good money on the weekends or full time, whatever, like I said, don't have a website that has a ton of rock photos because you think you want to be diverse, okay? We use the analogy of the plumber, you know, or the heart surgeon who daylights as a plumber during the week. No offense to plumbers, but I don't want someone who is a plumber some of the time doing my heart surgery, okay? I don't want someone photographing my kids or paying good money to photograph my kids when really they're just good at photographing rock concerts. I mean, they're both awesome fields, okay? But you want to specialize and then you want to show that specialization on your website. Rich. Uh, I'm curious what you think about this. What is the most important page in your website? The first one they see. Does that uh, make sense? I know, I know it's kind of that, like a, a BS answer. Yeah, landing no, page I think that's great. and a, I mean landing page and then honestly, um, I mean it's kind of that's a hard question, David. Like I, 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 I want to see what you. I, I, the about me page is really important because that's, what I, that's there you go. Continue there. People that's can people can book people can book David, or they can book me or they can book Daniel, or they can book Zach and Jody, but they can only get the experience of working with David if they book David. So when I'm selling to my clients, I say, you can get good pictures from like me and four other people here, world-class great pictures. There's 60 of us here, but these five people will give you amazing pictures, but you only get the experience of working with me, with me. And that's what I sell more than I even sell the pictures. Like when I w helped David grip um, like that Mercy Me picture above your head, um, I literally watched David in his element. Like I was setting up stands and lights and you know had a bungee cord with gaff tape on my hip. And he, his job that day was keeping the band happy, keeping the marketing director happy. And then he came up and grabbed a camera that was pretty well set because that was like my job right then was to make sure, you know, I don't even know he, how to he, set up lights. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you looked at me and it was intimidating as all get out. You said, hey guys, tomorrow my job is to keep the band and the art director and the record label happy. It, it's not my job to do anything else but that. So make sure it's close in camera. And I was like, okay, 
Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, so like, I, and I love that kind of pressure, honestly. But you know, that's that's working with David. They they booked you for that beautiful blue V neck and those baby blue eyes. Like that's what they want, and that's what they got. So when you're looking at how to sell yourself, you need to figure out. Like I said last week, there are so many photographers that are subpar making more money than you because they know how to do what we're saying. They know that a good looking logo works. They know that a responsive website works. They know that, you know, having an about me section is important. Like all this stuff is huge in the beginning steps of how to build your business. And you know, what, what better way to sell your business than this online gallery of your best work? Yep. Love it, man. That's so good. Uh, yeah, I was I was hinting towards the about page is like the most important page, but arguably the first page you land on is maybe is maybe the most important, and then the the um, the about page is like equal if not second, you know. But yeah, it's so important, like you said, um, to to basically you know show what you want to sell in your galleries. Okay, show what you specialize in, and show only your best. Don't show a ton of crap. Okay. Mm. People if it's crappy or out of focus, don't put it on their website. If I see yeah. an out of focus picture, nothing drives me crazier for some reason. I'm like, bro, like I know that you have one of these in focus. Like, really? Like, why is this in the gallery? Stop it. Right, right. Yeah. So, you know, I'd say the first page you land on is so important. Your portfolio needs to show only your best photos. If it's only 10 photos, that's okay. Okay. Don't put 400 pictures and hoping they land on one because you can't choose. That's your responsibility, and it's hard. It's hard to choose photos. It's a lot of pressure, and it can be stressful. Sorry, get over it. <laughs> Life is hard, you know. Um, only pick your best photos for your portfolio, and um, make your about page sing who you are. Showcase your personality. It's okay to be polarizing. Okay, if you're if you're a tattooed, you know, person that loves tattoos and riding on a motorcycle like show that side of your personality because it's going to attract people who are just like you okay uh or or are okay with that it may not if you know the tattooed motorcycle person may not be the um they they, they may not be the right fit uh personality wise and that's okay for um you know someone that's more let's say preppy or something you know um, and that's okay. And you, you know? and you don't want that client anyway. Like, yeah, they're not going to be a good that. fit for you. You know. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. Like accepting every client could be like its own podcast. Like don't. It, oh gosh. Everybody does that when you're broke. But for the love, like, put let's your personality on there. Oh let's, my god. Let, like, uh, let's talk about that next week. Yeah. No, I'm saying like I think that'd be a no, great no, goal. no. I think yeah, that'd be a because great... it's such man. The moment I learned that is the moment I became a happy business owner. Like mm, I went through yeah. years of like making money and hating myself. So we could talk about that next week. Yeah, but I mean, I even to, to echo on David's speciality for one more second, David, and I, I know I do this a lot, but a big argument we had like five years ago in the biz was we had trying to fit, no no like, like just in the industry in the industry was like gotcha. photographer geographers. Like they were like, oh, you don't take video too? Like, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Gosh. And these and these people are doing that and having a photo booth. And I said, I would use this very same approach. I said, I'm a neurosurgeon and I'm here to fix your brain. Your video guy is your heart surgeon. Here's, he's here to fix your heart. I don't want a neurosurgeon working on my heart and I don't want a heart surgeon working on my head. Like we're both have very specific things we're tackling. And we're both doctors and we're both great at what we do. But 100%. I can't do his job. He can't do mine. 100%. So that's why when you when you niche down and get specific like we talked about you're both great at it like but you know I'm either a photographer that turned into a videographer or a, a videographer that turned into a photographer like you identify as one so whatever you identify as tackle become invest get better make money I love that that's so good don't try to be all things you know I think that I think if there's one takeaway today it's well, I think there's a lot of takeaways. I think this is a really potent podcast, to be honest with you. But um, I think if there's one takeaway, it's, it's you know, pick an area of specialization. And so, you know, photography by itself is not an area of specialization. Let me tell you, the wildlife, the National Geographic wildlife photographer who's photographing lions in Africa might be horrible at photographing newborn babies. He might suck at it. He or she might be 
horrific because they're used to like camping in the brush and getting bug bites and camping out for for hours and they like the silent and they're not good at like you know getting people's attention or whatever it is and vice versa right so photography is not a niche areas of photography are niches okay so you can't be all things photography that's not that's too broad in general and you certainly can't do that and be a videographer at the same time and demand respect or high prices if you do that you're then the you're you're the generalist you know that you're the, the jack, jack of all, the jack of all the, trades master jack, of none jack of all trades master of none who will never charge good money when i say good money meaning like above industry standards will never garner and gain top respect for your field if you do not specialize in photography or specialize in video in a specific niche in the video market if video is what you want or photography if photography is what you want for example photography is not the specialization newborn photography is a specialization and you could even specialize further and say i do natural light newborn photography where babies are in flowers before that's, eight a, days old. that's a niche what's that before they're eight days old like my right the that's person who took pictures niche. of my baby that's like i paid her i think 600 bucks to take a picture of my kid and i'm like oh my god yeah but that's a niche photography is not a niche photography is a general area right you know you can need like natural light portraits is not a niche senior portraits is not a niche it's like photographing you know senior senior portrait athletes on the field that would be a niche you know what i mean so anyways specialize only show your best stuff and make sure your about page is freaking kick a because it needs to be awesome and attract the right people i think you guys could do it it's easy yeah Yeah, like and once you niche it's easier to name uh coleman sports photography coleman newborn photography like it niches with you like don't be a scared don't be scared that your name is taken you can find something even if it's something you hate like coleman shots i'd be interested in comments where people are like let me know like what what photography are you interested in and niching in? Like, just for me to come back and look at this, like, yeah. raise your hand if you like newborns, raise your hand if you love landscapes. Like, just from a pure curiosity sake, because me and David, David owns a business teaching photography, but not just teaching photography, he teaches niche specifics. Like, he has learning tracks on how to pose people and shoot people on natural light. He has tracks on how to shoot people with strobe light. He has tracks on who to, how to shoot landscapes. So, it's really fun for us to learn what you guys want so we can better the lives of our students. And I mean, you might be able to talk better to that because it, it is your name attached yeah. to this thing. I love it. So good. So good. Um, that's great. Love it. Yeah, if you guys would let us know in the comments, like if you're, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, let us know uh, what you'd like to specialize in. Um, so Sonia, you're saying portraits is what my niche, arguably that's not a niche. What type of portraits? You know, is it family? Is it baby, family? Is it senior? Baby? And if it's family, is it stro- shooting studio strobes, or is it shooting natural lights, or is it shooting you know photos of indoors? Like, what what is the niche? You know, portraits is like a little bit more narrowed down, but not fully. So, just one of those things, just something to think about. All right, we love you guys. We're gonna do a giveaway. Um, what are we giving away again? Yes, this lens, the 50 millimeter lens. A 50. Right. A great way to start your portrait photography journey. Whoever wins. That's right. All right, you want to pick? You want? To, I think our team just sent us the giveaway. I, they did. Um, I'll do the drum okay. roll, please. Yeah. And the winner is. And the winner, Tammy Deason. Tammy Deason. Tammy Deason. This that's a that's a decent uh, winner. Winner. Uh, le- yeah. le- lens. She wanted a right decent there. lens. She wanted a decent lens. That's right. That's right. Tammy's my wife's name too, but I think this might have been spelled differently. Um, but anyways, yes. so great. All right, we love you guys. So next week we're going to talk about what, what were you saying? We're going to talk about oh the wrong clients and stuff like that, or or, or like the, specifically the type of clients that you want. Yeah, attracting the right business and turning down the wrong business. Mm. Like, not everybody. For me, it was not everybody's worth four thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. Right. Believe it or not, there are people that are like, I'd rather be at home and not make any money than deal with that jerk. You know. So um, that's what we'll talk about next week. Yep. Love it. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in on this week's Your Photography Mentor podcast. Rich, you are my favorite ginger shot. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, baby. Yeah, I, I, need I, was look, I was looking um, I was looking for a ginger shot in my fridge, and I guess I'm out of them. So if anyone wants to mail me some ginger shots, that sounds good. What's Rich. your address? <laughs> Let me announce that on air real quick. Just yeah. kidding. Hey, we love you guys. Y'all have a fantastic week. 
Um, we will uh, see you guys soon. Next week. All right.